All right, here we are. Now I have sound. That's better, right? <laughs> I thought I had everything ready to go. Let's see, I think on time. Yeah, let me check the time here. Might be 10.01 already, but it was pretty close. All right, here we are. Our chat's now I have going sound. That's here. Better, right? <laughs> How's everybody on this Tuesday? To nice to see all of Let's you see, I here. I hope time. you are having a wonderful yeah. day. Check the oh, time come here. on. Might be 10.01 yep. already. Right on time. Close. Good to see you all. Um, all right. I see some here of you had watched yeah, Tiffany earlier. Awesome. Here, right. It's great to have her How's back from Australia. And we today? missed her while she nice was gone. Nice to see all of you. Let's see. Uh, let's see. You today, uh, this day. is Take Two Tuesday. Oh, if anyone here is new, yep. this is Take Two right Tuesday from all. the Stamps of Life. My name is Ken, and I am one of the owners here along with Stephanie. She's the main face of our company, and she does all the fun stuff and makes all the fun products that you guys enjoy. If anyone um, here is you new, usually see her on these videos. I started doing Tuesday, these videos here at the beginning of the year. Ken, and the Take Two Tuesday, what we like to do is look at some... Main face of oh, I'm echoing. Hmm. Fun stuff oh, I see. Sorry. Yep, I have an extra button on there. Hopefully that's better. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> I have a lot of buttons going here, so uh, I had one extra one on. Let me know if it goes away. Hopefully it works over here on Facebook. I know I'll be losing my Facebook people. So let's start that one over. I hope you can hear me and I hope I'm coming back. Hang on. Let's see. So I've got to end this one and let's Hang in there, we'll get you reconnected here. I hope, can you hear me? Now, I hope. Let's see. Yeah, hang in there. My system just totally crashed. So this was beyond my control. I don't know what happened actually. So we're restarting and we'll get reconnected here. Hang on, one second. I gotta get Facebook reconnected and that takes a little bit extra work compared to the YouTube side. So hang in there. Let's see, there's the Facebook stuff. And now what do we need to do here? Okay. Get in there, get in there, hang in there. And I apologize. Okay, hopefully that gets us going on Facebook again. And hang in there, we'll get it. I'm getting more calm about doing with, dealing with this kind of stuff because it just happens. And honestly, some of the time there's just nothing I can do about it to, to fix it. Things just happen, so let's see. All right, hopefully our Facebook people are back. Hope you guys can find us. All right, this is now going to be, uh, let's see, that is buffering again. So what's going on here? Hmm. Um, so this is take two Tuesday, actually take two. We're gonna, we're starting over again, right? So <laughs> this is actually take two. Let's see what's going on over there. Oh boy. Come on, YouTube. You can play that. Oh. Okay, so let's see what else do we have going on. I hope you all enjoyed. Did I get my Facebook group back? Yep. Hey, Jeff, I see you there. Jeffrey, yep. Sorry about I got disconnected totally from the internet. So my systems just seemed to crash there for a second. Um, yep, we're doing take two now. And it looks like we are going, uh, what else is happening here? Kind of have to reset everything a little bit now to make sure things are working. Will that pop on? Nope. Let's see. Hmm. I think I know how to fix that problem. Where I had everything lined up and ready to go. Now I have to go back and fix all the things that um 
it would have saved until I had to shut down all the equipment and start over. Let me see. Come on now. No. Okay, switcher. There we go. Okay, you guys don't want to see me there. I better push pause on this one. Or it's going to start talking and we'll hear me echoing again. We don't want that. Okay. All right. So take two Tuesday. Um, I told you the few items we'll be looking at or we'll go through those. So there'll be a little bit of surprises. Uh, let's see. Did everybody have a great St. Patrick's Day? That's what I wanted to know. Um, we did drive by a couple of places that were like uh, Irish bars or... Um, Irish restaurants, and they were full, crazy busy. Is my stream going out? Okay, I think it is. Okay, it says excellent connection. I hope you are getting me. Um, so I was wondering if you had a nice St. Patrick's Day. And I had a question for you about St. Patrick's Day. When you see a big crowd of people and um, everybody's getting together to celebrate or something... Are you the type of person who wants to be in that celebration? Like, do you want to be in the crowd with everybody? Or are you the type of person who wants to avoid the big party and the big crowd? When Stephanie and I saw that, uh, those big crowds by the place, that was my first, my first thought was, gosh, that looks pretty overwhelming to me. <laughs> so I tried to, myself, I tried to avoid the crowds. I was wondering what you guys like to do. Do you like to participate and be a part of the party? Or do you like to stay kind of on the outside of it and avoid it? What do you think? That's my question for you today. I'm hoping the echoing is all gone and that the, the um, sound is good now, I think. I think everything seems to be looking good. Yep, the crowds, like, I know, like, say we're going to um, Knott's Berry Farm with the kids or something and... We tried to go on a day when it's not going to be busy. Like if it's spring break, we do not want to be there. But if it's a day when we know all the kids, all the other kids are going to be in school, then that's for us. We we want to avoid the lines and the big crowds. But it's just funny. Some people are different. Some people like to totally participate and get involved and feel that sensation or that, um, what would you call it, um, that buzz, that, um, I don't know, that extra sense of being in a big crowd and participating in something big. Some people like that. And for me, when I saw, like, I think about uh, parades or big crowds uh, at, at a game or something like that, and I'll just watch the game on TV. It'd be, I think it would be fun there to be at the game, but I think I would rather avoid the crowd so yeah that's kind of how I am and I see that's like how most of you are answering so I thought that was just a question that we could all think about celebrations I like it just to be a little bit more low-key but everybody's different and that's fine that's how God made us right to all be a little bit different all right let's see what happened to my little is that gonna work now nope that is not working oh what will work today hmm Oh, there's my name. I got my name on here. Great. Okay, we're going to get started. Oh, let's see. I did, at the beginning of the of this episode, I did post uh, that tonight there will be new items on the Stamps of Life website. There will be some new dies you might want to check out. So don't forget about that. They'll probably be on the website 5 or 6 o'clock tonight. And you'll want to see that. Stephanie will have a video out and all that good stuff. Um, oh, I forgot to bring it, but... There is a brand, oh gosh, I should have brought that. I forgot it. But we have a brand new card kit that just started shipping last Friday. So if you are interested in the card kit club, now would be a great time to sign up. Uh, it is uh, kind of related to the uh, stamps and dies that came out on the first of the month, the butterflies. So it's kind of oriented or connected. This has a similar theme, so very beautiful. And I've seen a lot of people signing up. So... If you are new to the Stamps of Life, if you want to get into a fun club, the card kit is awesome. Let's see what else for news. I think that is it. We'll get started here and we'll go ahead and start looking at the items that I have with me today. The first one is this stamp set is called Life Too Hard. It was released in, let me see, I think I have this information on a slide here that I can pull up. 
it was released originally. This is a this is the oldie one that I was talking about. Uh, where we go? There we go. From December of 2013. Have any of you been around with the Stamps of Life since December of 2013? That is a long time. So that one is going way back, like in the vault. But it's been a super popular stamp set. It has the sentiments on it. Don't worry about it tomorrow. Or don't worry about tomorrow. God is already there. Trust God. When life gets too hard to stand, kneel and pray. Be still and know. And when you are down to nothing, God is up to something. So it has some kind of fun, encouraging uh, stamps on here. And let me find it on the website. I only have one card sample to share with you. Since most of the samples uh, were made a long, long time ago, they are packed away somewhere or they went to shows or something like that. But I do have one to share with you, so I'll show you that and then we'll find out. We'll take a look at them here on the website. And give me one second to switch over to the website here. I think that will work. Great. So there we have it. Um, it's called Life Too Hard. Nope, don't like that. There I am. Um, Life Too Hard, it has, you get five stamps on this set. Our stamps are made in the USA. They're going to be super high quality. You're going to get nice impressions. I'll show you. I'll stamp one real quick. And then when there are a couple samples on there. But it has the encouraging sentiments you might like. Um, there's that one. And these are, again, going way back in time. I remember seeing these cards a long, long time ago. But there are a couple samples on here. And I know if you go into the gallery, there are more um, There are more options, more sample, card samples for you to see. So that is called Life Too Hard. And I will show you. I have my one sample. And I will show that to you. And we'll stamp this real quick. Let me cut over to me. Again, this is Life Too Hard. And this is a really nice sample. If I can switch over to that. All right, so that one's the don't worry about tomorrow. God is already there. So very good. And I like that one. It's a pretty card. I just saw it, this one single card, and I thought you guys might like to see the stamp set. So on this one, they're using the tags or the dotted tags. And then you just have your regular A2 base, card base, and the Dragonfly Flowers A2 card set are all on there, okay? All right, and I will come back over here real quick. I'll go ahead and stamp it. I did do practice one stamp ahead of time, but just to give you an idea on how easy it is to do, we're gonna move over here. And this is a really nice block. I just checked the website. It's the three by five grid block. It is sold out right now, but I just got a shipment of them in. So I will be shipping them to Utah today, you'll, they'll probably be available by the end of the week. So it's nice, it has the lines on it, so if you're trying to keep something nice and straight even, it's perfect for that. And then for the stamp that I'm stamping today, it fits on there just perfect. So I will show you, I'll grab this stamp off of here. And let me see if anybody has any questions. Uh, Deborah says she has this one. Yep, so again, that's what we're talking about. A lot of you probably already have this stamp set, but this is just a reminder. You want to get it out and use it. Take Two Tuesday, that's what it's all about, using some of the items that you already have. And again, if you're new to the Stamps of Life, this will be a kind of refresher time too. So maybe something you're not aware of, this is something that you can find on our website. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and peel off that. Don't worry about it. God is already there. So I peel that off. I'm just going to lay it right on my block. And that's a pretty good fit. As you kind of want to use as small a block as possible whenever you have a stamp. It just makes it a little bit easier for your impressions. Obviously, you can't be smaller than the stamp, but this one fits it pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and move over here and ink it up. And I think I can do that. Okay, here we are. So I've got my block. 
Now, normally you would want to use a nice large ink pad, but surprise for me, I want to use black ink, but this actually has green ink in it. I thought this was a licorice, a large one, but surprise. Is this a custom color? No. What is it? No, no. It is custom color, but whenever I see these black lids, I think it's licorice, but it's not. So green in there, we're not going to use this one, but if you have a larger pad, it's much easier to get the ink on the stamp. Custom color is just one where if you have a refill, these are just plain blank. You can add any ink color you want. Nice way to make your own ink pads. Okay. But I'm not going to use that. I wish I could, but I do have a mini in licorice. And so what I'm going to do is just take my stamp here. And I just, I'm going to have to tap and move around a little bit to make sure I get ink on all of these. I could do it this way if I like. I kind of like this way. I feel like I have a little more control of the ink pad and I can see that I'm getting ink everywhere on the stamp at the same time. Oh, that looks pretty good. And then I have a secret weapon. What is this? It's just squishy, cushy like a cushion. So when we go to stamp, it gives a little, it's not a hard surface. This will have a little bit of give in it and it'll improve our stamping results. So I have cut out a little practice sheet ahead of time. I'm going to just stamp on that. Get that down, get my stamp on there. Press, make it nice and even everywhere in the center. And there we have it. Let's see if I can get that right in the center. So easy, right? And my inking came out pretty nice and um, I got a nice good impression there. All right. So that is Life Too Hard. You can put that on a card front inside a card. Maybe you need to encourage somebody very easy. All right. And come back over here. All right. Life Too Hard. I hope you guys like that one. And let's see what's up next. We are going to look at now. This is called the Chickadee. Let me change my little title there before we go on. The Chickadee Fold It Die Set. It is, this is a bundle. So you get a couple extra things there too. Hang on one second. Let's see that one will drop over there. This is from, now this is not the original when it got made into a bundle. I think it might have been on HSN, and then it did get on to the Stamps of Life website. It is from, the notes that I could find are from February of 2022, but I think that it's been around a lot, uh, not a lot, lot longer, but a few years longer than that. I would say more like around um, 2018, 2020, something like that. Um, so check it out. It comes with the die set the folded die set then also it has you get some epoxy dots which are a fun easy way to embellish your card and it has a little stamp set too so you will have some um easter sentiments with that too before we go on to look at this i do have one more question for you uh, do you have any, this is since for this kind of Easter theme, this kind of time to make Easter cards. Do you have any special memories from Easter? Something that sticks out in your mind that you remember, or, um, when you think of Easter, you think of it fondly in that way. I think of when I was a kid, they had those little, um, those dippers, those wire dippers where you would get the, I think it was alcohol. I don't think it was water-based back then. And our parents would put the the little um oh, the little pill the color pill in the cup with the alcohol or the water I, it smelled funny so it had to be vinegar maybe it's vinegar um and they would drop it in there and then we would put the egg the hard boiled egg on top of the that little wiry thing and dip it in dip it into the colors and you get all these crazy colors coming out i always enjoyed um coloring eggs and having fun like that but 
my eggs never look like the car, <laughs> the ones on the outside of the box, I have to say. So I do remember coloring eggs. That was great. Um, lots of fun. I don't know what your memories were. Maybe Easter egg hunt or lots of chocolate. I remember eating lots of chocolate when I was a kid. That was fun. Um, getting dressed up. Like it, most of the time, it was supposed to be a special day, so you're supposed to dress up on that day. Uh, I remember hiding eggs or going out in the yard and looking for eggs. That was fun. Easter baskets. Uh, what else? A few times I went to church when I was a kid. Uh, I don't think a whole bunch of times we went, but there were a few times we went. And of course, we'd have family dinner and all that kind of stuff. But I just remember the baskets and all that. What is that? That grass stuff that they put in the basket is like everywhere all over the house and jelly beans all over the house and uh, lots of eggs. That would be the one time of the year I think that uh, we would eat hard-boiled eggs. I don't remember eating hard-boiled eggs any time except for that. So if you have a good, fun memory, post it right there just for fun. It's fun to hear what everybody enjoyed or what they remembered about Easter. Probably a special time with your family. Okay, we are going to continue on. Let's see some of those answers. Sharon says, yep, jelly beans. Um... Mom overdressing us, Sylvie said, for Easter Sunday. Yep, my kids. I think one time my mom tried to get me to wear a suit when I was like five or six or something like that. And I think I wore it because they made me, but it was not fun. <laughs> I did not like that. What else do we have up here on Facebook? Uh, Deanna said Easter egg hunting with the kids was the best. Yeah, our um, and uh, Patricia said my twin grandson's first time meeting the Easter Bunny. Yeah, we've had a... Some fun times the last couple of years with Liam and Miller. They have a little park by them where their neighborhood gets together. And I saw a video where all they could do is just grab an egg. And this is a couple of years ago. They would just sit there and rattle the egg or put it. This is the plastic egg. Put it in their mouth or shake it. They weren't walking or anything yet. So it was kind of fun to see them just studying the egg and see what they could do with it. But now they can scoot around and they can keep up with just about everybody grabbing all the, the eggs for the Easter egg hunt. All right, let's take a look at this on the website. Uh, yep, Julie says she liked to dye eggs with the nieces. Yep. Uh, let's see, what else? Okay, we're going to find this one on the website. And I'll let you know what's in here. There it is. Okay. So you're going to get a few. There's not too many dyes in this one. It is... I can switch that I think no let's see what did I there it is okay you get a grand total of no nope, three dies in this one so it only needs three dies lots of paper piecing with this one and I cut it a little bit ahead of time I've been doing the fold it um, cards the last couple of times so this time I won't focus so much on making the fold it we'll, we'll spend a little more time on the flip it but I did cut some of the pieces ahead of time and then it comes, the stamp set is, oh, what is it? There it is. It is a three by four stamp set. It has one, two, three, four, five sentiments on that one. And then you get the epoxy dots. I don't know how many epoxy dots on there. Maybe a hundred, maybe 80, somewhere around there. But that's nice. And everything coordinates together. Uh, let's see. Okay. We will open that up. Now, if you were to make a fold-it card, this is the die that would make all your fold-it. You would fold your card stock and match it up to here. You can see from the videos we've done in the past or the ones that Stephanie has done, easy how to make a fold-it. And then I went ahead and I cut some pieces from this part of the die where you get the different pieces. So let me show you my samples before we go on to, to look at that. I have a few. I actually thought I had more, but let's see what's on the web. I'm not even sure if the website has any samples. Let me double check on that. One sample and there is a video for it, okay? And then I have my sample. So let's take a look at those. We'll move this out of the way. And I'll put these, display these for you. Okay, here we go. So I have, you can see the different colors. And how do you get all those different colors? That's where you 
piece it together. And some people have mentioned that you could use a the kiss cut pad. That will help you keep all the little pieces a little bit more organized and easier to find. But if you run this die through just by itself with one color cardstock, you're going to get all just one color. So if you do yellow, it's going to be everything's going to be yellow. But you can see on the card it has uh, purple. It has in the the little dots, the polka dots. It has some different colors, and then the chicks yellow. So the only way you're going to be able to do that is piece it together. You would have to run it through like this card. You would have to run it w through one time with like a a grape or a pixie to get the purple look. You'd run that through one time and then you'll run through your yellow card stock. So maybe you're using lemonade or pineapple, one of those color card stocks. And then for your little dots, um, you're going, the polka dots, you're gonna have to, obviously you've got like a teal and a pink. So you're gonna have to run it through a few different times. The fun thing is if you do all those different colors and you run them through different times, you can make a bunch of different cards. You don't have to make just one every card will be different because you'll have all these different colors that you'll be able to piece together. So paper piecing on this one, I'd uh, be smart to use a lot of, uh, put your adhesive on before. Adhesive sheets would help a lot with this. And yeah, let's look at the other samples. We have this fun one here with a little sign. This one, I'm not sure exactly how it's made, but it feels like it has some has felt being used. And I'm not sure if that's Stamps of Life felt or something else, but it does have like some sparkly on there, which is kind of cute, right? That's a nice one. And one more. So we had these where they were just made as fold-its. And again, on the fold-its, you have the option. It could open this way, sideways, which probably would be most time, or you can open up on the top too with your fold-its. And here, this is the um, chick where it's placed on a card front, just like that. All right, so a few ideas for you. Now, I again, as I said, I went ahead and I cut some of the pieces ahead of time because it is a little bit extra work. And so you can see in my bucket, I have like some green and some, well, where are they? I think I use lemonade and maybe like kiwi. So I have a few of the pieces here already cut. And then I will go ahead and I will cut out a base. I won't do it as a fold it, but I'll just run it through one time. And I think I'll have something like a razzleberry color. Let's take a look at that over here on the machine. Okay, there we go. So I have my... This would be the main die if you were to use make it a fold it card this would be making your card base and your card front and it has it tells you right there where to place your fold and also on the side so you have those two you have your option either here or here and it tells you on a fold that all the folds will tell you where to place your fold on your card stock but i am just doing a card front right now get that out of the way our two cutting plates cutting pads get a little bit of an angle for that die and get it lined up straight and then we just run it through once clear that out of the way and I'll bring it back okay so easy, at least this part. And I have my card base. And then the pieces that I had made before, I have to compare this to one of my samples. So let me find one of those again real quick. Make sure I'm kind of lining these things up right. So you can see they've used different colors than I have, but if I want my, that would be the base down there, the base of the egg. And where's my egg top if I want to stick with the green that's going to line up up there and then you're going to have to have your little chick which i did in yellow and you can kind of see how it starts to come together those will all line up 
And again, for the sake of time, I'm just kind of showing you how you piece them together. And you have uh, some dots there too. Uh, we need a yellow dot to at least make it look a little bit different. And maybe that one goes in there. So just to give you an idea how it's going to work. Again, if you have your adhesive on all these, you don't want to try to go back now and try to add adhesive by rolling on. You could do it, but it's going to be a little more challenging. So you, if you get that on there first, now you just be peeling it like a sticker and adding it to there. And this one has a lot of uh, color shading or blending. I saw the eyes. There are dyes for the eyes and the little beak and all that fun stuff. So pretty easy. So that is our Chickadee A2. It makes an A2 size card. That one, that one over. There we are. Okay. And we are going to move on to our last item. Um, this is, let me switch my slide over here real quick. Find it. This is a square flip it die set. It also makes an A2 card, size card. Um, it's nice. It's an interactive card, so it has some motion to it. And lots of fun. Let me fix my chat here. That's live. Let's see if I can get down to the bottom of that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let's see what else. Facebook, are we doing okay over there? I see some of the time you guys get... Um, hidden on Facebook. I don't know why that's happened, but I try to unhide you whenever I see that because the comments are nice and everything. So I don't know why you're getting hidden, but every once in a while I see you guys get hidden on Facebook. So yeah, I see a lot of you had some fun memories from Easter. That's great. And hopefully you can make more memories with kids or grandkids or neighbors or some way to make it a special day. Okay. I'm going to put the chickadee stuff away. Next up is our... Make sure I am on here. Looks good. Uh, this is the square flip it die set from from what does it say? Uh, July of 2020, and uh, I think there was a version of this also with the other company. But then we have our stamps of life from July of 2020. It's popular. It's is a flip it, and flip it are super easy, super fun. I'll show you. How quick we can do one of those but we'll go to take a look at the website first and I'll just type in square and flip and see what comes up yeah it's the first one there there is a lot in here but I always when people would come to our booth and talk to us about the products or the cards I know some of the time they would be a little bit overwhelmed because look there's a lot of dies in there right but the main thing is to know that basically Three dies do almost all the work. You have your main die, the big large die, that's gonna do the base, that's gonna cut it and score it. And then you have this panel and this panel here. That's gonna be, those three dies do almost all the work. All these other ones are just decorations. So it be depends on how elaborate you want to make your card or how much time you want to spend on it or how special you wanna make it. There is lots of extra you can do, but to get that basic, quick, fast card, which that's kind of what we're going to do today, you just need those main three dies. It does have a sentiment that fits in the middle. It has big hugs, happy birthday, and what else? Thank you. So those sentiments are all in there. Now over on our website, let's take a peek. All right, there you have it. it says 18 dies are in this set. 18, a lot, a lot. Again, don't be overwhelmed. Most of the um, card bases that we sell, it is just one, two, three, maybe four of the dies do almost all the work. When you see a die set that has 20 or 30 dies, like for some reason I saw a die set somewhere here at the store yesterday. We had a store day and we had a lot of friends come by and I help them try to find things in the store because um, you see the card samples. We don't have everything in the store. So they show me the card and then we go and I grab my iPad or my tablet and we look, go to the Stamps of Life website and I try to think of what that card base is. We look it up, find it, and then it tells us all the information. And sometimes I'll ship them to our customers if I don't have it here. But anyway, we spend some time and I saw one of the dies had like 50 – the die sets had like 50 dies in it. I'm like, oh, don't worry. 
you see these main dies are going to do all the work so it's important to know that it is a lot easier some of the time so don't get worried or afraid oh look at all those dies i'm never going to be able to make this again most of it's just decorative okay so you get your it makes an a2 card which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches and uh, that's like a nice standard size card uh the, some of the extras of flower pot flowers and then again the sentiments thank you happy birthday and big hugs are all in there let's look at these samples real quick that's the one from the card front. Let's see if I can scroll over and get a couple more photos, a couple more samples. Here we go. Okay, that's the dies, all the dies you get there. Doesn't look too bad. And you get a few card samples. And I have a few of these to share with you as well. And so mo you see most of it, just a solid color for the base. And then they're using um, some pattern paper for the little um, panels. Big hugs. I see a popsicle on there. And a thank you. And they've used a friend die from maybe another stamp set or another die set. And big hugs there again with our bees. That's bees for me, I think. And there's a video. We don't want to watch that. All right, let's see if I can switch back. Okay, good. All right, so that gives you an idea on that. We'll go ahead and we will move over. Yep, we had, yeah, Jean, we did have a store day yesterday. Uh, we had a lot of fun. It was pretty busy in the morning and then it kind of uh, thinned out. And then it was getting warm and hot during the early part of the day. Whoops, why am I looking at that? Sorry getting warm and hot and I thought it was going to be like almost a summer day and then um it started raining <laughs> about one o'clock and it rained from about one to three so that's unusual for us people here in California oh and I did want to mention to you if you didn't know today is the first day of spring so I know that some of you for some of you it's still freezing freezing cold we are we are getting a few days here where it does feel like spring's coming in and then it just kind of switches back to some rain and kind of a cooler winter but if you're in that freezing zone hang in there spring starts tonight it, officially i think they i heard it's 11 p.m so tomorrow would be the first full day of spring but if you're looking for forward to spring and thawing out you're almost there hang in there okay all right let's take a look at these I'm going to again just work with a few of the dies in this set to show you how easy it is to do oh my card samples I keep forgetting about those hang on let's take a look at those first and some of these might be the ones we saw on the website but there might be some different ones as well so it's always fun to even though you're we're, you're not in person here with me it seems a little more exciting when we see them on even on this video screen here all right let me get that there we go all right so this this is the square flip it die set and you can see that's a really beautiful basic card but lots of nice colors again here's another one using some pattern paper and it's got the thank you sentiment in the second in the center and you can see how the cards, they have that motion and gives you some interest. I like this little area here. You can add your notes. You can make it a little more personal. You can write a little message right in there. So you have that space to work with. This one says big hugs. Kind of looks like a, has a ocean water type theme. And some cute little bows on there. Here's that popsicle card that we saw on the website big hugs and this has our floaties we saw some of those last week when we were looking at that pool fold it i will be coming up when we get closer to summer we'll look at take a look at that stamp set and the dies that work together with it but that's foldies uh fold not floaties not foldies i don't know how i got that but you know a fold it with floaties that's tough to say, but that's what the combination we have there. And then we have the big hugs and that has the little bees. I think we saw that one there. And this one has some 
cool little tortoises, probably from our tortoise, tortoise to stamp collection or more tortoises to stamp, one of those. And a thank you in the middle. And then last one, this is the one from the front of the packaging. Make sure I can open that, there we go. And so you have the option, you can decorate the inside of your card if you like, big hugs like that. You could write on the back if you want to put a little speci special message on there. Or you can leave this blank and you can write there. So different options for you on that. All right. Okay, now we will move over to our little extra table and do some die cutting. And this will not be a 30 second card like Stephanie does, but my goal is to show you that it's pretty easy to make a quick card with these items. So let's see what we can do. Sometimes the hardest thing is just getting me out of the, the package. They really tape them down really good so the dies don't go flying all over the place. Hang on one second, there we go. And it's officially stuck. There's always one little piece of glue in there that just holds on and will not let go. There we go. So I break that out. I'm going to get that big die out of there. We're going to move over to our die cutting table. Whoops, not that one. There we go. All right, so we will pull out the largest die for our card base. And that one, then as I mentioned before, these two panels will be doing a lot of the work for us. And this one here. And I will probably do these squares real quick just to show you how easy it is to do. All right, we got all those off of there. Let's get our card stock. I try to get a little combination of different items going here ahead of time. So these are going to be some of the colors I'm going to work with. I have my pattern papers. This will be the base. I believe this is artichoke. And then this will be for the little square where we're going to want to write. And these will we'll pick out a couple patterns here for our panels that will add to the card. So let's get going. I have added, I'm hoping this helps me, I found an extra magnetic sheet and I'm keeping this here right next to me in hopes that I can keep all these dies together. My goal is any die I use, I'm just trying to place it on the magnetic sheet. I keep that right next to the machine here. And so far, I'm finding all my dies, which is great. It was not what I had planned, but I was. we were cleaning up the office at home. You know, we had moved this last week and we have a ton of extra stuff from the home office. So a few things made it back here to the warehouse and that magnet magnetic sheet was one of them and I decided to put that to use. Now we do have magnetic sheets on the website. I think there's a couple different sizes. If you haven't used one of those, they're nice for storage. And here I'm finding a different way to use it while I'm die cutting on a table. So I'm finding extra uses and it seems to be pretty handy so far. All right, I've got my platform set up right. I don't want to get too far out here because I want to make sure this cuts correctly. One second here. And I have my die, you can see it at a slight angle. We're trying to avoid the speed bumps. I know some of these things I probably tell you every episode, but for somebody who's new, maybe who doesn't know about the speed bumps, the speed bumps, uh, when you hear the big clicking on your machine, it kind of causes it your machine to skip a little bit while it rolls in. You don't always get the nice die cut that you'd like, but if you rotate your die, it just, instead of going straight through, if you just give a slight angle, your cuts gonna, your die cutting results are gonna be a lot, lot nicer. So there I have my base, and I'm gonna see how this 
the score lines are there. Look how nice those score lines are. I can fold it on that score. It's got all these nice cuts here. And then I'm going to fold it on that score back. And there I have my flip it card, all right? So I've already got my motion. Now I just need to fill in these panels. And if I want to add something there in the center, I can do that as well. Crease that down a little bit. Whoops, sorry about that. And I'm gonna move this die over here on my magnet. I won't need it again, but if I want to find it, I can. And now this is one part where you want to think ahead a little bit. I like to line up the panels to know what I'll be doing. And this one's gonna go on this side and this will go this side. And then we're gonna choose the pattern papers that we want, okay. And if you're paying attention, you'll make sure you cut the right side with the correct panel. The worst you'll do is you'll get, you'll have to flip over the, the piece that you cut. So it's no big deal, but I try to think ahead of time to make sure that I get the results that I was have, hoping for. So we'll try this piece of pattern paper for one of the panels. And I did see some bigger dots. I'm actually gonna use this one also right from the front. And I like how we have the greens that are gonna match this card base really nice. And these, since they come from the same pattern pad, uh, paper pad, they're gonna to coordinate together as well. All right, let's go ahead and run those through our machine. And so this is the part where you wanna be a little bit careful. I want this to be the smaller panel. So I'm going to add that die there. And then this will be for the larger side of the card. We'll run that through separate. Got both of my cutting tabs there. And we will run it through. Don't have to go all the way, just over that die. You hear that crunching, clicking, that's all okay. But see, I had my die kind of lined up straight. And you could hear that clicking, that is a speed bump. All right. Now, this is not the best way to do it. I'm putting glue or adhesive on my little work table here but we're just trying to save some time. So ideally you would take this and do this in another location, not on your die cutting machine. I have the adhesive on there. There's one panel. And now we have to do the other side. I'm gonna keep this die over here on my little magnetic table. I'm gonna run through the other side. This time I will give that little angle that I'd been speaking about to avoid the speed bump. Now let's run that through there. There we go. So easy. Once you've done a flip a card a few times, you could crank these out really fast. Again, I'm not trying to make a 30 second card in five minutes like Stephanie, but you could just about do one of these cards in that amount of time. And we need to get some adhesive on this one. And we're just going to place that on there. Get that lined up. There we go, there's your flip it card. Now say I want to add in a little square there. That's super easy. I have some white card stock. What did I do with that? Here it is. platform back over here and I want to just do one little square I'm gonna make sure this lines up make sure I do have the right die I do I have that die this is going to give our area to write on And right through the machine there. Hopefully I have that lined up so we don't get a bunch of squeaking. 
And we don't have to run it all the way through just as far as the die is. Bring that back. And there I have the inside. Add a little adhesive to that. Gonna add that to the center of my card. Now there are dotted frames. There's different things you could add to make it look a little more decorative in there. So I have my writing set. And let's just for fun, let's go ahead and finish up and do the die out here on the front. Now this one I haven't done yet on my own, so it will be interesting to see how it turns out. Um, I'm going to use this sentiment that says big hugs along with the dotted frame at the same time. So let's, again, I'm not 100% sure how this will turn out, but let's give it a shot and see what happens. I have my Razzleberry cardstock again, which is going to coordinate with the base that I've already cut. Get that on there. And we'll see what we get when we up. I think this is a spot where, if you really wanted to line up, and I'm not going to do it just for the sake of time, but this is going to, you can see this die is going to move around just a little bit inside that square. If you want to keep it centered and really nice, you would want to use some washi tape, something to hold it in place a little bit better, but we're just trying to get this done real quick. So it will probably be a little bit off center, but it should look pretty good. All right, so I have all that. I'm gonna just drop off all these pieces. And this is, a, now I can see, again, since this is the first time I've done it, this is something I should have put an adhesive sheet on first. Because to try to get the adhesive roller on it will be a little more challenging. I can do it, but it would have been easier if I would have done it on a... Adhesive sheet added that first. So I got some adhesive on there. I'm going to bring my card back over here. And press that down. What do you think? Not too bad, huh? I used one, two, three, four, five die cuts to, to get me to this look this far. Of course, you can shade, you could add epoxy dots, you can decorate it, you can write in here. I did want to tell you something. We have the sentiments that you can add to the back, and I have a couple of those to share with you. So when I pop over to the other table, I will show you. But so easy, right? Five dies. You could crank out a bunch of these real quick and they're nice when fun when you open them up they have that little motion and space for writing super super cool right what do you think all right i'll move back over to my main Here's camera here to see you guys again all right i'll get find that chat again what do you guys think pretty easy card huh not bad so if you have that you have the square flip it in your stash break it out if you have any flip it they almost all work like this so easy five die cuts and i had a nice card ready to go a2 card looks pretty good i could go crazy and make it look a lot nicer be super decorative do some shading but if you want to just get a quick one out for fun there you go i like that one all right, and what, how I was mentioning, um, we have these. A lot of people were buying these at the um, store day yesterday. We have the personalized stamps. Now, these are kind of the gen generic ones that we have, but when you go to our website, you are able to make any kind you want. You can be, it can say created by, you can add your name to it, or you can leave a spot to sign it. All kinds of different versions created by again I know that some of them are made with love these are all created by but whoops that's the same one I just showed you sorry so you have this option you can we have some little icons that you can add in there you can put your name we do addresses all that kind of fun stuff and this one has a little teapot so if you are looking for uh, a fun personalized stamps those are on our website when you go to the main page See if I can show you on our website here. Let's see. Whoops. 
which I think that's better, right? Was I out of sync there for a second? <laughs> Sorry about that. I was using the mic that I used for that table, but I'm supposed to switch over. Um, so hopefully I'm back in sync. Um, these are on the website. Let me show you. So if you go up here to the top to the shopping page, if you never have purchased one of these, it's something you might like to have a fun way to finish off your card. You just scroll down here, clear stamps, personalize. You click on that. And let me get rid of this over here. You can see all the great options there. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, not that one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, let's turn that. Okay, there we are. So you have all kinds of different options and you can go through, add different icons, look at all these different shapes we have. You can do addresses, fun way to finish off your card. You can make, there's like cute sayings, sassy sayings. You can make up all kinds of stuff. I think Stephanie just says no bad words. <laughs> so I think we can all handle that, right? No bad words, that'll be all right. Okay, so that's on our website. And back to me, I think. Here I am. Great. All right. I do have the short video. Again, this is kind of like our good news segment. I'm, uh, we'll have a little bit of Bible right after this. And there's a video where this gal, she's a bus driver. And let's see. She's going to save some kids. So let's, let's watch this one. This is just for fun. We kind of did our card making stuff, but... Good to hear some good news stories, some things that turn out good in life. Sometimes we don't always hear that. So let me see if I can get this play in. And give me one second. I got to switch over the mic. Uh, let's see what happens here. They try to give me, oh, they try to give me a commercial. So give me one second. At least we don't want any commercials. I'm gonna skip that. Okay, here we go. And let's see, how can I enlarge that? Great, I think I've got it. Okay, just a little short story. I think it's about a minute and a half or two minutes. But um, again, we're just looking for some positive good things in life. And yeah, I like to hear some good news. Most of the news is not that great nowadays or kind of wears us down or gets us anxious or worried. So here we go. Let me switch over and get the sound on there. And I will press driver Play. hailed a hero after saving nine students as her all right here we go Chris Welty so i guess this is down south in new orleans right wow i don't School know if any of you are from that area is accustomed to checking her bus before running her route even though she says her bus is new wednesday morning she was about to make her fifth stop when she noticed something seemed off as soon as i seen a bus smoking my answer was get them off the bus Rusev pulled over about a block off of Chapatulis. I've seen his smoke, and then while the girl come and tell me, you know, the bus is on fire underneath, I got him off. Rusev quickly ushered the students ranging from kindergarten through eighth grade off of the bus. I didn't use the emergency exit. I went out the front door. When she got the students to a safe spot, she made one more pass to ensure that everyone was off. I turned the bus off. By the time I turned the bus off and got off the bus, the bus blew up. All I heard was boom, boom, boom. And I was like, oh my God, the bus just blew up. Wow, There's right? Still of how <laughs> I thought it was just a little bit of smoke coming was. out of the There's truck. oil sheen and the pavement is still charged. She really but did save those kids. Too, Good for her. I home and not cry because the kids was crying. Rusev says she was thinking about her child Look at that. as wow. she saved the students on her bus. She works for Community Academies of New Orleans and says she's been driving school buses for three years. Cano calls her actions Courage on Wheels, saying Rusev was calm in the time it's Great that crisis. she had the sense to get everybody I feel off of there. about I, you know, save other kids' lives and save my life. Rusev believes a faulty alternator is to blame for the fire. She says she's proud to share her story of heroism and says God was watching over everyone on her Oof. bus. That really First went up in smoke. Fox, <laughs> Community wow. Academies of New Orleans says in light All of right. today's fire, they are conducting additional inspections on... Anyhow, let's stop there and let's switch back over to me. All right, just something fun. Well, not necessarily fun, but <laughs> something good, right? Something good came out of that. So that's what we're looking for, some fun stuff like that. And did I lose my... Oh, I think I lost my browser. Darn it. Where is it? Hang on one second. 
I think I lost my chats. If you are going to hang out for our Bible section, go ahead and um, if you want to open up, if you have a Bible app, that's what I'm using, the Version Bible app. And whoops, let's see if I can find my chats again. Sometimes it's hard to find good news stories like that, but they are out there. Oh, no, now I'm signed out. Doggone it. Let's see. Hmm. I closed that one window and it closed everything. Let's see what is going on here. Give me one second. Try to get back over here. Huh? What are they asking for? Nope, nope, nope. Not going to cooperate now. Here's one of those things again where you do one thing and boom, then you're in trouble. <laughs> so I'm in trouble right now. I'm losing everything. Okay, Facebook wants to send me a message. I'm not going to be able to get that one back, but hopefully I can get this one going. Nope. Okay, I'm not going to be able to see that chat. So anyhow, that's great. Good for them. And yeah, thanks. Those kids were kept safe, right? Okay. So I am going to grab my Bible here, Matthew chapter 6. And again, we are looking at, let's go ahead and turn that one off. Make sure that mic's off. We are looking at the Lord's Prayer. And I will read the whole prayer through first, and then we'll focus in on the one verse. So Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 9, uh, Jesus said in this manner, Therefore pray, our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Whoops. And then we had talked about that last. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So again, Jesus' model prayer for us. His disciples had asked him later in Luke how to pray. And this is the response that Jesus gave them. So this is a model and outline for us. We've talked about you can pray this prayer if you would like. Um, we all can do that. And then um, we have um, verse 11 is our main focus. So give us this day our daily bread. And what the Lord is saying here is we have needs, right? Don't we all have needs each and every day? And we are to come to God with those needs. And the point here is we are to ask. We need things such as uh, food. We need water. We would pray about our health, a place to live. All these things that provide that God provides for us, we want to go and bring those things, those needs to him. Interesting, it says, it doesn't say, give us this week our daily bread or this month our daily bread or this year, but it says, give us this day our daily bread. I think the importance of that is that God wants us to come to him each and every day. And now we live in a place where probably most of us, we have tons of food in our cupboards or in our refrigerators. We have all the things that we need, but um, sometimes we can, since we have so much, we experience so much, we forget to ask God that he would just provide for us and take care of our needs each and every day. But God wants us to come to him every day. So I think it's something we should practice. And we have talked about that in other things that we're asking God's will to be done in our lives. We're spending time praising God each and every day. We want to practice these things. Again, we're trying to set those things where they just become a routine, not as going through the motions, but something that we practice and becomes real and just uh, uh, a super important part of our lives that we pray and spend time with God. Again, for me, I like to start the day off doing these things, asking for God to take care of my needs that day, to watch over, protect the people that I care about. Or sometimes, I don't know, you see homeless people around lots in Southern California. So sometimes I see those people and I'm asking that God would take care of them and provide for their needs. I know they're not doing well, but we can, pro we can pray for each other. We can um, pray for our own needs. God wants us to do that. And we're asking, you know, that he would just give us what we need for just one day. And a little bit later in the chapter, I think it's real important. I think these connect really well. So if you go down, if you have your Bible or you are looking a little bit further down, you can 
Let me see if I can grab this and pull that up. If you go down to verse 25, I think this is real key in our connection with our needs, some of the time they might overwhelm us or our focus might um, become too great on, you know, our problems or the things that we do need God's help with. But here Jesus kind of said how we should resolve that. Starting with verse 25, Jesus said, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life or what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And you are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add even one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith. Therefore, and this is here, it's key. Do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knows that you need all these, these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And I think that brings us back to where we're just praying for the needs that we have today. We're asking God to take care of us today. We're not, we, should we plan for the future? Yes, we should plan for the future. Um, it's wise to have food in your house. It's wise to make sure you have enough income to pay all your bills. It's wise to... Make sure you have some savings maybe in your bank so if something comes up in the future. But the important thing you know, I think is Jesus is really saying there is he doesn't want us to to um, worry about these things. So I think that is the real key. If we are just focusing on one day and we're asking God to take care of our needs, whatever they might, might be for today, um, God will meet that need if we ask and seek and ask him. He says right here, doesn't God take care of the birds? He makes the flowers beautiful. He provides for all of his creation and he takes care of all these things, but how much more are important are people to God? God values people more than anything else in his kingdom. So it's good to know that if you go and you ask God for whatever need it's gonna be, that he's gonna take care of it. Perhaps exactly the way you expected it and perhaps in a different way, but I know he's going to take care of you because he loves you. He promises to do that. So that will wrap us up, okay, to, on today's Bible study. I hope you are encouraged by that. And uh, let's see what else. I think I made a slide for that verse. So if you are joining us late, we looked at Luke chapter 6. Let me see if I can find that. Short verse. Oh, where did I lost it? I lost my verse. Anyhow, Luke chapter 6. Let's see. Is it over here? Nope, 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 nope. I don't see it. Oh, darn. Anyhow, Luke chapter 6, verse 11. Was, and it just says, give us this day our daily bread. And again, Jesus model prayer from Matthew chapter 6. All right. Okay, I want all of you to have a wonderful day. Um, sorry about a little bit of technical problems. One was my fault with the echoing at the beginning. And then my little um, streaming machine here just decided to crash and conk out. Um, couldn't do anything about that. But I hope you had a good time and enjoyed the presentation. If you would hit likes or if you want to add any comments at the bottom, that would be great. I would love to hear from all of you. Um, I always check in on the comments. If you have any need for prayer, you can add your prayer requests there. And I do watch those and I write them down and pray about those. So we'd love to pray for you. Uh, let's see what else. Thursday night, we have Stephanie's Crafting Corner. I hope you will make it then. And I hope you will have some, take some time to have some fun today. Get out your old stamps and dies, the ones that are buried in your closet down there or stuffed at the back of some, um, cupboard or a drawer you haven't broke them out for a while 
and you find a way to use it. Maybe you'll find one of the sets that we use today. Maybe you'll find the Life Too Hard or the Chickadee um, die set or the Square Flip It, any one of those. You can make a great card or stamp and have some fun with any of those items. Use those items, and then, again, if you joined us late, this is recorded. It will post again pretty soon, and you'll be able to go back and watch this at a later time. Maybe there's something you want to see again. I don't know about that, but maybe <laughs> you can go ahead and go back and review the video, and you can skip and fast forward and do all that kind of fun stuff. It'll get posted on Facebook and YouTube. Okay, I think that is it. I am going to get all set up to sign off here i think i can do it no close some things are not in order since they were okay i've got it there we go so i will see you next week on take two tuesday again we'll start at 10 o'clock next tuesday and then thursday night we have stephanie's crafting corner tonight there are new items on the website so i hope you'll stop by and check it out all right i hope god blesses you all with a wonderful day thanks for joining me today and i will see you soon all right bye-bye